Hey everyone, this is Ellie Mae with Swift Creek Customs, and today I have a couple of things for you. The first thing that I'm going to share with you is I have created a shortcuts menu. It is a free PDF file that you can find in the description below that you can click the link to download and then you can print it. I have created this in version 1.1.9. There are additional things coming to the software, so we may see additional shortcuts that happen and that are added to this list. As that happens, I will update the information and the PDF file. The information will also contain the version number that you will need to have downloaded in order to have those updates with those new shortcuts. I will also link to Caesars shortcuts when they have that published as well. So let's take a quick glimpse at what this looks like. So I'm just going to open up my PDF viewer and here is the shortcuts list. So you'll be able to print this off once you download it and have it for easy access. Some of them I use and some of them that I'm going to learn how to use and then others I probably won't use as much, but every single user is different. So here's just a quick reference for you to be able to use those shortcuts. A lot of them are similar to other software programs. So that is available in the link in the description below if you would like to grab that to be able to print it off. And then the next thing I wanna share is a brief, hopefully brief, um, kind of tour of the Leonardo Design Studio software as it stands right now. It's not going to be an in-depth tour of every single tool and function because that just takes too long. But I wanna point out a couple things here. So in your top menu, let's go back and we'll just start at the home page. When you open your Leonardo Design Studio software and sign in, you're going to have this home page here. The tools on the left-hand side, it popped up for just a second and then disappeared. On the left-hand side are everything here, above design is web-based. So it'll pull information, which means you have to have an internet connection. It'll pull information off of the web servers. That is updated all the time, and that is a great resource to be able to access. And since it's web-based, they can easily update that without having to update your software every time. So you can click over here, and let's see if it'll load for me. My internet must be very slow right now. There's our inspiration. I'll come back to those other tabs there. That's probably just my internet, nothing to do with the software. There's the design library, and you have designs based on whether you're a basic uh, Leonardo Design Studio user, or if you are a pro user, you're going to see additional designs in here that have this little shield. It should all come up, there we go. The little shield says requires premium license. That would be to use those files. And I there's several thousand of those pro files, but there's also a lot of files that are available for just the basic user. So let's come back up here to the home page and see, there we go. It is going to maybe show up here. Again, this is my internet. There's some tutorials, so it's coming along. Um, this is the cone warp tile array. They're adding new tutorials in as they publish those as well. So you'll find that in the software. We have a materials library that's going to list all of the Caesar materials in there and give you some color patterns and things. Then your Caesar cutter is going to be what is registered to you and what you have entered in for your registration. On my page, there's a couple doesn't look like I have anything on my page right now. It's not loading. Um, it would be your most recent recover documents and things like that. So I'm not gonna wait for it to load. We're gonna go over here to the design tab. And then I wanna point out these menus here at the top. So file, view, edit, paths, arrange, help. All have menus under them. And going back to the keyboard shortcuts that I was sharing with you, this is where I found them. So you can also find them under your menus. And you're going to have different ones for different things. So if I was to show rulers or hide rulers, I can click on that or I can click the letter R on my keyboard, that's going to do it. If I were to zoom in with F3, F3 zooms in, F4 zooms out, 
F2 does a pan, and I can left click and drag my mouse ac across the screen. It activates the magnifying glass down here. So F2, and then we also have this new mouse hints or tool hints that show up in the bottom right corner. So this is another great way for you to utilize this software. And you can continue and explore what is under each of those menus. Now, when you have something that is grayed out, it is not accessible for you to click on. That means that there is nothing selected on your screen that that tool applies to. So you cannot use that action because you don't have anything selected on the screen. So if I were to draw a shape here and come back here, now you can see that my menus are highlighted and I can use those. So I could copy, edit, and paste. And then it's pasted another one there. Okay, so once you move along, you find your tools here in the top. You also have help. You have a software manual that'll also be updated with new information as we go along and more things are put into the software. Cutter calibration. Um, tutorials is great out here because you have a tutorials over on the left side. Um, then you also have about and software updates. So you can check these things out for yourself. Down here in your bottom toolbar on the bottom left are many different options. And the best way you can learn is to simply move your mouse over top of those and see what pops out. Below the toolbar, you're going to see a word or the name of that tool. So if I move my mouse over here, select is the main tool, but I have touch select and I have bound select. And then the next one is the point editing. So I actually have to click on an object to select it before that tool is available and it's called edit curves. So if I click on that, you're going to see those edit points come up. And then I'll just kind of go through these. Again, I'm not gonna go through each one and show you how that's done. I already have additional tutorials on the Swift Creek Customs YouTube channel that will show you more in depth on those, but you're going to see different tools. Now, the one thing I wanna point out here is that you may see additional tools under my toolbars on my screen that do not match what your screen shows. I currently have the Caesar Leonardo Design Studio Pro version active on my computer, which means I have access to those additional tools. And there is more information on the Caesar Leonardo Design Studio Pro also in the uh, description of the video. So you have these toolbars down here that you can also use to access those tools. And if we activate, uh, the text tool is not the best one, draw you're going to see those mouse hints show up on the right hand side if you have those activated so it's a great way for you to explore the software and to get familiar with it now on the right side here in the top i am a keyboard shortcut user for control z which is undo undo is your best friend in the software if you can learn nothing else undo is the number one tool to learn there's also the undo and redo buttons up here in the top corner. I didn't notice those for a really long time. And then there's also this return to web pages. Um, if I click on that, it goes back into the web pages area. So I'm going to click back on design. And then you have your two panels on the right hand side. Your first one, if I activate that, that shows our artboard and it is where you choose the cutting mat or the material roll. You set your size and you can set up a print and cut. Then the next one down, let's get this one closed here, is your properties panel. And you have color picker, and whether you want a fill or stroke, you have your scaling tools for your height and your width dimensions. And then you also have this new positions tool where you can move things. If you click that positions button, you can then move objects to a certain position. So some of these change as you toggle things on and off. You also have the mouse hints here. I use the software all the time. I've been using it for almost a year now, and I still, I love these mouse hints. They are very great to learn because I may do things one way, but those mouse hints might tell me that there's another simpler way to do things. And so I'm learning things all the time in this software. The other part of the properties panel is the layers panel. So if you click here on layers, it's going to show all the layers that you have. And I will link further 
tutorials in the description below as well so you can learn more about each one of these more in depth. The next place we'll go is to the send tab. So you have different options here. The words that you see on the screen tell you exactly what it's going to do. So if you read those carefully, you're going to know how it is going to behave when you go to the send tab or how your machine is going to start cutting. For instance, if I have positioning options here, if I choose to move each color layer to the origin, as you can see on the screen, my circles are kind of in the middle of my design area. When I click send, they're going to move to the bottom left corner, which is the point of origin. Now let's go back one last time and I'm gonna click send again so I can show you the difference. Use current mat and page location. If I select that, it's going to use this current location where I have placed my design. It's going to keep it in that location in relation to the point of origin. So your point of origin is always this bottom left corner. That's why there's a little black L bracket here. It's always your point of orientation. This is always where you want to place your blade when you start to cut. If I sent this design to cut, it is going to feed in this amount of material to cut this design exactly where it's placed on the screen. So you're going to have what, six inches of material that's fed in or the mat fed in before it starts cutting because you selected keep relative position. Now on the left hand side, you're going to see your different design mats. Now Leonardo Design Studio, I'm gonna come back out here and I'm just going to simply change this color for the example. And I'm going to choose move each color layer to origin. This is the hardest part for a craft cutter user who has been using those craft cutting machines to get used to when they start using Caesar, Juliet, or Romeo. Oh. I had the wrong thing selected, it remembered it. I wanna uncheck this, don't separate by color for this demonstration. So send every color that Leonardo sees, it places onto a different design mat. So that's why you're going to see gray is up here and tomato is down here, gray and red. So that's how it separates out. If you had a print and cut set up, you would see your print portion at the top here you're going to print from the send tab. You do not print from the design area like other programs. You print from the send tab. Again, additional links in the description below for tutorials on those specific in-depth things. So then you here you have your different machines. I was cutting to Caesar Romeo last, so it's going to show Caesar Romeo. Cutting mat, material roll, you can select that here as well. Your Caesar standard blade, this is the one I typically use all the time. Your pen tool is if you're going to be sketching with a pen or the sublimation markers. And your custom blade setting is when you are using a blade replacement that is not a Caesar blade. This is the only time you really need to use the custom blade setting. And the reason that is, is if I select it, you're going to see that there's this little offset here. Other blade replacements may not be the same exact as a Caesar blade. So you might see some differences in how it cuts and it could be because of this offset. So if you're using third party replacement blades and for instance, your print and cut is off, this could be why. You may need to get in there and do some calibration and figure out how you can adjust that. I use the Caesar standard blades, so that's what my selection is all the time. Now you have the use cutter settings. If you have this checked, it's going to use the settings that you have set up on your Caesar Juliet or your Romeo. I'm going to uncheck that. You can also choose to set up cut settings for three different options right now. Actually, I think, yep, three different options, which means you can send as a kiss cut for stickers and then a die cut, or if you want to use it as a die cut and a score line. So you can set those up and you can choose your speed and your force for each one of those. You have mirror, it'll automatically mirror for your, it says over here for heat transfer or any other material that you would cut mirrored for any reason, such as glitter cardstock is sometimes easier to cut mirrored. 
You have an auto weed box, which is really super cool. So I can place that around there. Another neat feature about the auto weed box is uh, let me move these around here for this demonstration and change the colors. So they're both the same color. So if I click send, and now I want to have a weed box, but I want a weeding box around each object. I'm going to click on it to select it and press the letter X, and it is going to place a weeding box around each of those designs. You can further adjust that by grabbing the little bounding boxes and adjust that smaller or larger in case it overlaps each other. Weeding boxes are a great way, especially for something like adhesive vinyl, it helps you to just be in more in control of the area that you're weeding versus having a full 12 by 12 sheet that you're trying not to stick back down to each other. Do it all the time. Your save to PLT file is going to be when you are saving it to a USB drive and you are cutting from the USB drive in your Caesar Juliet or Romeo machine. I find that it's just easier to go from the software. I have to design in the software, so I'm just going to connect it to um, through Wi-Fi or the USB if I have to, and then use that in the machine. But you do have the option that you can save the PLT file. If I click that, it's going to say save to USB stick, and you can save that PLT file and then take it to your machine and insert that in the USB drive. Couple more things here, you have force test. Force test is just your test cut. And area test. Area test is an awesome feature where you can send it. You gotta watch closely though, because it moves super fast. Area test will, without dropping the blade, so it is not cutting, it's going to map out your area of where your design is gonna be. So especially when you are getting used to the new machines and you have no idea how, what the point of origin is, or how this is going to work, how you set it up, area test can really save you. It's going to outline that full area of where your design is going to cut before you actually send it to cut. So you can watch that closely. And then we have our little gear icons, which is how you connect to your machine, USB or Wi-Fi. Now, I know that was super quick and hard to retain. Check out the description below for in-depth tutorial links to additional items on the Swift Creek Customs YouTube channel on several of the different topics. Now, I already have around 70 plus videos out on Caesar, Juliet, Romeo, and Leonardo, so I cannot possibly link them all. So I would highly recommend that you just check out the videos section on the Swift Creek Customs YouTube channel and just scroll down to find what you are looking for and see if there's something new for you to learn. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. Make sure to like, subscribe, and click that bell for notifications for future content.